Welcome back college football fans. So we all know Nebraska was screwed over in the 2009 Big 12 championship as Texas shouldn't have been granted the one extra second to kick the game winning field goal. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about why Nebraska should have won this game as well as discussing what other schools could have had a shot at playing for national title. With the referee crew partially agreeing the clock hit double zeros and the game should have been over, but the head official decided to take this to an official review, and at the time, per NCAA rules, this was a non-reviewable play. So who runs the clock? Well, there's a clock operator who sits in the press box and looks for the official signal to stop the clock at ends of plays. Although reports of people who have talked to the clock operator have all stayed anonymous, it has come out that he has said that there was double zeros on the clock, while other anonymous sources say he's seen one second still on the clock. This created extreme controversy, and we're going to be discussing all of it. Now let me refresh your mind on the 2009 college football season and let you know why the Big 12 needed Texas to win this game. The date was December 5th, 2009. At the start of the day, Florida would be ranked number one in the country, but they'd get knocked off by number two Alabama in the SEC championship. This would set up the Big 12 championship to follow big for Texas with a shot to play in the BCS national title game. Nebraska would roll into this game ranked number 22nd in the country, bringing along one of the greatest defenses the team has ever seen. Led by the defensive end and Heisman finalist Ndamukong Sue and also fellow All-American Jared Crick, this defense was stacked from the line to the linebackers as well as the secondary. This would by far be the hardest defense Colt McCoy and the Longhorns would face all season long and it would show early game. Ndamukong Sue alone would sack Colt McCoy four and a half times and Nebraska's team defense would end with eight sacks. You'd also see Colt McCoy throwing three interceptions in this game. Nebraska's defense did what it had to do, holding the Longhorns to only 10 points going into the end of the fourth quarter. However, Nebraska's offense, on the other hand, struggled all game, only being able to put up four field goals, all from Alex Henry. So let's get back to why Texas had to win this football game, no matter what the actual outcome could have been. According to CNN, in the 2008 season, the Longhorns brought in $87 million in revenue and had a profit of $65 million. And according to them, this was the fifth time in the last six seasons that Texas was number one in revenue out of all college football teams. Alabama would come in at $65 million, which was the fifth highest that year, but would only have a $38 million in actual earnings. With Texas making the most money out of all college football teams, it would make sense that the Big 12 would profit off this as well. So let's take a look now if the call would have stood that the game was over and Nebraska would have won the Big 12 championship who would have played in the national title game that year. Many could argue that possibly Florida could still be in the national title, but a rematch of the SEC championship isn't what college football needed, especially when Florida had a poor showing against Alabama. The number three team, Texas, losing to Nebraska wouldn't have looked good either. After a poor offensive performance, there'd be three other teams going into bowl week that were also undefeated. These were TCU, Cincinnati, and Boise State. TCU would have the smallest option to get into the national championship. Even though they were undefeated and won the Mountain West Conference, there was no actual Mountain West Championship game. Next up, we have the Cincinnati Bearcats, who'd come in ranked at number 5. They would go on to win the Big East title against Pitt, who was ranked number 15 at the time. However, it wasn't a commanding win, winning only 45-44. to And last up, we have Boise State. They would roll in undefeated, playing for a WAC championship against New Mexico State, where they'd win 42-7. Now the strength of schedule on these past three teams that I've talked about weren't very good. Boise State's most impressive win would be against number 16 Oregon, which they won 19-8 to start the season. So what would the NCAA done in 2009 if Nebraska had beat Texas in the Big 12 championship, especially trying to find a team to play against Alabama? With no other good options left, it really looked like Texas would have to win this game for the NCAA to make money. So let's take a look back at this final play. Texas was driving the ball, and on 3rd and 13, with a running clock, McCoy would roll out. Sue would apply pressure to him, forcing him to throw the ball, but it almost looked like McCoy didn't even know how much time was left on the clock. Texas would claim there was still one second left. This would then lead to putting it all on the line of a 46-yard kick, which Texas would drill. Whether or not the officials made the correct call, Texas would be crowned the 2009 Big 12 champions. They would go on to play Alabama in Pasadena, California, getting beat 37-21. to So I'm curious, do you think the officials made the correct call in this game? Or was it the Big 12 saying that Texas had to go to the national championship game? 
Or was it even a bigger conspiracy that the NCAA needed Texas to go to the national title game? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments, as well as let me know what other controversial college football games I should talk about. With that out of the way, I want to thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.